the SMU Mustangs. And, of course, Sonny Dykes is gone. Rhett Lashley comes in as the new head coach. He was the OC under Sonny Dykes uh, before the last two seasons. And he comes in. He knows what Sonny ran. He, he knows what this offense is supposed to look like. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at uh, the, the offensive balance here, Sonny Dykes last season, 52.5% passing to 47.5% rushing last year. Rhett Lashley's was almost the exact same. It was closer to 52-48, but you're talking about half a percentage point. Like, they, they are incredibly balanced between rushing and passing the football. Um, you know, they went 8-4 and four last year, started off 7-0, and oh, and then went 1-4 and four down the stretch, so that's not ideal. But they are number 38 in the country in returning production. That's 70%. Uh, offense is only number 54. Uh, defense is number 29. I don't know what that means for the defense because the defense was not exactly great last year, number 92 in PPA per drive. But on offense, they bring back Tanner Mordecai, the quarterback. They bring back their leading wide receiver, uh, uh, Rasheed Rush, or excuse me, Rasheed Rice. I'm, I'm trying to mess that up so many different ways. Uh, and then, of course, they've got the running back, Trey Siggers. And incoming running back Cam Wheaton, a five-star that was at Alabama for one year and transferred over. Uh, he, he went back home, basically, because he's from that area. Transfer wide receivers Moore and Simmons are promising here. Uh, Lashley's offense should be similar to Dykes. We talked about that. As far as the defense, the new D.C. is Scott Simons. Uh, he had been at Liberty for the last two seasons. Uh, seven starters back on D. But the question, again, Chris, that I ask you is how good are they if they were number 92 in PPA per drive, uh, number 126 in defensive uh, explosive play rate allowed, and their passing success rate was number 98. Their, their rushing success rate was number four in the country. So they did not give up a whole lot. Uh, you know, number 57 in opponent third downs, that 38%, they need more stops, I think. They were uh, number 106 in 20-plus yard plays allowed. Can the experience limit those big plays? That's uh, That's my question here. Give me your thoughts on SMU. Uh, again, started 7-0 last year, went 1-4 and down the stretch, and now you got a new head coach. Uh, what does that all mean for the Mustangs? Uh, I think this season's going to look very different than last season. Um, but record-wise, I think they'll be pretty close. I got them 6-6. Six and six. I think they're going to be okay offensively. I just don't know that they're going to be – just because a guy runs the same offense doesn't mean it's going to be the same. He's different. He's got a few things that are different. He's got his own biases and his own spin on things. He's going to tweak and change. Sometimes those are better. Sometimes those are not. Um, and and I just – I don't I don't know what it's going to look like defensively. I don't know. They've never been really a good defensive team to begin with. So I'm not expecting much from that side of the ball. Teams seem to score whenever the hell they want on them. So I think they're going to get 6-6, six and six, and I think that's – generous I'm I am really the more that I look at this like I, I've got this team at eight and four like this wow. I think I think I might be closer to you though like I really wow. do like I, I've, I've got a lot on the fact that the school players are back and they've got experience in Lashley's offense and all that I but at the same time yeah, you might be onto something here. Like this, this might not be as good. You know, eight and four, same record. I, I don't think that they're going to start off great. I, uh, I mean, you start with North Texas and Lamar, and so I think those are both definitely winnable games. Uh, but you play at Maryland, you play TCU, and you play at UCF. Like those three are going to be pretty brutal. And then you've got a break before you do Navy, Cincy, at Tulsa, and Houston. And then of course at the end of the year you got at Tulane and you got Memphis. So. I might have uh, I might have overcalculated here. You know what? I am. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna join you on the six and six bandwagon. Okay. You didn't want to split the difference even go seven and five. No, I'm gonna do six and six. Nap, you know what? I am gonna do split the I difference. am gonna do seven and five. Yep. I'm doing right. seven and five. Yeah. So I'll give them a win over just Memphis, think, a loss at two lane. Yeah. 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 I think they'll split that game. I don't know which one they'll win, but I don't think they're winning both of them. I, I, and I also don't think they're gonna lose both of them. Like, that's kind of the way I went through the schedule and I looked at these teams and I thought, okay, the easy games, the win. But here's the thing is, I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, it's like last year they beat TCU, right? Like, I don't see them going in and beating TCU again. Like, I just don't see that happen. 
Yeah, I don't see it happening either. Sonny's, Even though the game Sonny's is at SMU. Sonny's just not going to want that to happen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't Agreed. matter. No, well, especially because it's, I mean, you'll have more TCU fans than SMU, I would imagine. So, just doesn't matter. But regardless, so, I'm with you. I'm with you on it because I, I do think uh, Sonny is not going to let that happen. Like in his first no, year. Sonny's just like, not going to let that happen. I agree. I agree. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.